So y'all ready for the word this morning? Yes. You know, when I was praying over that offering right now, the Spirit of God quickened to my remembrance a, an interesting um, service a number of years ago. I think Brother Kenny Gatlin was ministering here. And I came up after the service to, to receive the offering. And uh, as I walked up the stairs here, uh, I brushed and my arm brushed against somebody that was standing up here pretty amazing. I mean, I really brushed up. The, I, I like, is this, you know how you walk by somebody and they, they bump you in the shoulder? Well, I walked up and I bumped that right there in, in the shoulder. And I went, wow. But I didn't say anything. But what I did do was I, I received the offering, got talking about the offering. And uh, I just moved over because I, I thought that if there's someone there, well, maybe they're still there. <laughs> yeah, I did. I just, but I didn't say anything. But I just, I just walked in. I went right over into it. And my legs went right out from me. I just completely went down on my knees. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Now, you know, I, I, I think it was just, I think it was Jesus. Yes. Amen. Do you know Jesus is here? Yes. Right now he's here. He's in this house. Yes. He's in this house because you're in this house. Yes. Amen. Yes. Did you know the Holy Ghost is here? Yes. Why is he here? Because you're here. You're here. Amen. And I don't know if it was that service or, or it was another service, but it seemed like it was. Um, I remember I, I started to pray over the offering. Yeah, that's right. I started praying over the offering, and I, I couldn't pray. And all I could do is just started laughing. I started laughing in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I opened my mouth, and I tried to pray, and I couldn't pray. But just, it was just joy. And uh, so here's the thing. What was very interesting is one of our, at that time, our music director was sitting in the very back, Cheryl. And, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to close out this offering gig. You know what I mean? But the Spirit of God's not letting me do it. And, uh, you know, we were in, you know, real need. I remember at that time, we just, you know, we need a little extra to take us over. But I wasn't talking about it. I really wasn't saying anything about it. You know, I'm not one to pull for money. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, um, some people just are anointed to be able to just get up and share and the Spirit of God moves and all that. And, uh, but anyway, the Holy Ghost decided to do something. As I tried to pray and close out that offering, she comes running from the back to the front and uh, drops an offering. And what happened was that first initial, when I started laughing, I tried to close it. Spirit of God just touched her. She grabbed her checkbook and she wrote a check. And man, she did that real fast. I see some activity going on back there. So see, she runs down and she puts the offering in there. And then next thing you know, the whole church, so many, almost everybody, just saw her come running and started putting the offering in. Isn't that funny? That, see, see, let me tell you something. That's a supernatural offering. Is that supernatural? Right. Amen. So um, anyway, I thought I'd walk over here and see if anybody was hang, <laughs> hanging, hanging around over here. You know, over here, uh, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. So, but uh, you know what that is? That really is supernatural ministry. And if I'm going to pastor, I've said that with the Lord, you know, years ago. I said, God, if I can't, if I can't pastor supernaturally, I don't want to pastor at all. Right. Amen. 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 I should think we should have manifestations of the Holy Ghost and, and power in the church. He says, Paul, he says, I came, Paul came, I came not with enticing words of man's way. The first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter two, right? I came not with enticing words of man's wisdom. I knew nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. But I came not knowing anything. He said, for Jesus Christ, him crucified with not enticing words of man's wisdom. But what? But in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power so that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Amen. Come on now. 
But uh, you know what I've been teaching on? Anybody been paying attention to anything I've been saying over the last few weeks at all? <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to service, you can just catch it on Sunday morning on channel four. Amen. At 6 a.m. <laughs> you know, people, only, I could always just, I would just, you know, rewind TV. It. Amen. But I've been talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, many of you know the story and and some of you don't, but a few weeks ago, I was going to go a particular direction in teaching and ministry, but the Lord arrested me about one o'clock in the morning, and I just started, you know, I couldn't sleep, you know, and so I got up, and I went into the living room, and, and sat down there, and uh, started praying in, in the Spirit. I thought, well, I'll just pray in the Spirit, you know. Started praying in the Spirit. I don't think I'd pray 30 seconds, and with 30 seconds, I was in a deep flow of the anointing and the river of God, so deep, so strong, flowing out of me. And it was one of those things that you have happened about five or six times. I've had happen five or six times in 34 years of being saved. So I know whenever Spirit of God talks and moves like that on the inside of me, deep down inside, there's something coming. It's something very important. Amen? And so uh, I, I said, Lord, what is it? And on the inside of me, he just spoke so loud and clear. He says, I want you to preach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Preach on the baptism. And it was just so strong, you know. And uh, one of the things, and I shared this with, with you a couple of times, but I didn't tell you everything about it. You know what I'm saying? There's just some things I just didn't feel like I should say anything about, but there was, there was more to it. And I'll just share a little bit with you about the more. And of course, I came and I, I preached on it, and I've been preaching on it for several weeks. But one of the things I asked the Lord there, I thought, well, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity here, man. He's, he's so here, you know. And I said to him, I said, why don't you just appear to me? I mean, you talk to me so clear, so loud, it's so amazing. I said, I, why, why don't I just also get a visual too? I mean, I'm, get the, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you clear, loud and clear. Praise God. I'm feeling you, experiencing you. Let me look at you, you know. But then, of course, he didn't answer that prayer. You know, I didn't get to see him. You know, I saw the ceiling and the wall and, and, and the TV and, and, and all that. But then I asked him this question. Because I've been on a path, and I'm still on this path, of ministry and teaching. But I said to the Lord, I said, but what about grace? That's what I said, exactly like that. I said, what about grace? You know, because I, that, that's where I, I love preaching and teaching along these lines. I've learned so much and I've been so walking in so much, I don't just joy and, and freedom in God, you know, and, and on. I, I really don't want to get off of that path. So I, I don't want to move away from that. But it was a very comforting response. He said to me, he says, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of grace. So whatever you do, and no matter what you do, what you preach, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of grace. Amen. 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 But I didn't know where I didn't know where that was in the Word. I just knew I'd, I'd heard or I'd read it, and uh, so anyway, the Lord stirred my heart up about that again, and I want to look at the reference over there in Zechariah. So go with me in your Bibles to Zechariah, chapter twelve. Zechariah, praise God, <clears throat> and we'll see. Take a look at this. Because I have a mandate from the Lord. And that mandate, go preach and teach my people faith. Amen. And then a couple years ago, a couple years ago, the Lord uh, ministered to my heart. And he said this to me. He said, he, he, he said the, the word of faith, as far as that, the, that's a movement, now God is moving uh, in the midst of it. So it's been going on for 2,000 years, by the way. I do want you to know that it's just not something that's in the last, you know, 30 or 40 years or 50 years. He says, but in this present time, he said, the word of faith is anemic, anemic where grace is concerned. And so that's where the Lord put me on that path. And that's a whole nother testimony of how he did that. Amen. Put me on that path of understanding grace like I've never understood it before. And it brought balance. It just brought a great balance into the, the message of faith. Amen. Because really, the Bible says that we're saved by grace. Did you know that? Yes. Is that right? We're saved by grace. Are you saved through faith? And that not of yourself, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
And so it, it is a message of grace. It's a revelation of grace. And what does faith do? Grace is God's part. Amen? Faith is your part. But remember this, that your faith came from Jesus also, which is by grace. Is that right? So even your faith is something that's been given you by the grace of God. You don't earn your faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So grace is God part. God has done all the work. It's called the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. But where does faith come in? Faith accepts it. Faith believes it. Faith receives it. Faith takes it. Is that right? Amen. Amen. That's why we have to understand and you know understand faith and and because we and understand grace and what belongs to us, but then learn how to receive and take it. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. So look at here again at Zechariah chapter twelve and verse eight. It says, "In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David." And the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour, that's really important, I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the come on, the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Well, who is that talking about? That's a prophetic word concerning the Messiah, Jesus. Amen. And notice what he said. He says, I will pour upon them the spirit of grace. Look at what it says then. They will look upon him whom they have pierced. I want you to know that the spirit of grace always points you back to Jesus and the finished work. Do you understand? You You see the order here. He says, I will pour upon them and pour out on them the spirit of grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor from God. It's not based upon what you have done or what you haven't done. It's based upon what Jesus has done. Amen. And that's where the spirit of God, the spirit of God, this is one of the things I love about the Holy Spirit. When you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, He reveals Jesus to you. He doesn't bring you under bondage. He doesn't bring you under a bunch of religious rules or laws or any kind of rituals that you have to keep in order to please God. No, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of grace. And when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, let me tell you something. He's always going to get you to look at Jesus. Remember, he says he will not speak of himself, but he will talk, he will speak about me. Amen. And what else? He says he'll show you things to come. Hallelujah. So for those of you that have been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, I want to put you on notice today that you've been baptized with the Spirit of grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are baptized with the spirit of favor on your life. Say, I am baptized with favor. Hallelujah, man. I'll tell you what, that'll preach again and again. In other words, God is not mad at you. He's not frustrated with you. He's not wringing his hands, you know, upset with you. I'll tell you this. While you were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And he took your sin and he took the penalty and the punishment for your sin. Past, present, future, forever. He took it for your whole life. And I want you to know he did it 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years in advance, he paid the price for all your sins, all the things that you would do, all the mistakes that you would make. He was the one who suffered for it. Now be free in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Say, I am free free. from sin sin. and the penalty of sin. sin. Say this with me. Sin Sin. has no dominion over me. I am not under the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. That's a good confession, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I want you to go over with me to Acts chapter 1 because that's been our foundational text, Acts chapter 1. And we're going to pick up there in the first verse. Hallelujah. I just love teaching and preaching about the Spirit of God. Amen. So it says in verse 1, it says, Oh, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, look at the next word, after he threw the Holy Spirit. Notice that. After he threw, the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostle whom he had chosen. And what does it say? To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And then, of course, he says, being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, what is the promise of the Father? Which you have heard from me, John truly baptized with water. Let's read the rest together. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Praise God. That's the promise of the Father. He commissioned them. He told them. He said, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs would follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. Amen. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. In my name, they will take up serpents. In my name, if they eat any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Did you notice in the midst of all of that, he says they will speak with new tongues. And then he says, you go to Jerusalem. Don't you go anywhere else. Uh, You go out and you do all these things, but don't go do it. Don't even try to go out and do any of these things until you pass by way of Jerusalem first. Don't leave Jerusalem. And so what happens here? The disciples said to him, they said, now therefore, when they had come together, verse 6, that they had uh, asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has put in his own authority. But, verse 8, what? Come on. But, but, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be, what? Witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. Do you think he meant what he said? If, how many of y'all are baptized with the Holy Ghost? Ah, look at it. Y'all are speaking other tongues. Got several of you didn't put your hands up, so maybe, just maybe, if you decide to, really God wants to give it to you, you'll get filled with the Holy Ghost after this service. Amen? How about this? How about you just get filled where you're sitting while I'm preaching? How about that? How about it? Two people here recently, they were sitting on the service, I was preaching along these lines, and they, the, their testimony was, it was like the Spirit of God had come. But once soon as I gave the invitation, and they'd been coming to services in the past, you know, maybe last year or two, one of them anyway. And, uh, but boy, as soon as I gave the invitation, the Spirit of God just come over them and touch them. They could get down here fast enough. This is wonderful. You know, it's so easy to get folks filled with the Holy Ghost like that. Amen. God confirms his word with signs following. And I believe him for that. I expect that to happen. Amen. And so uh, if you're baptized with the Holy Ghost and you've received their heavenly prayer language, then this is you right now. What happened when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? You received power. You did. You received dunamis, miraculous power. Amen. I'm not against prayer chains. That's all right. I used to be because a lot of times folks would just, you know, they wouldn't even do any of their own praying. They just put themselves on a prayer chain. Get everybody else doing all their praying for them. You old lazy thing, you. Come on now, I'm going to ask you what, how many prayer chains you are on, dude. Huh? Come on now. 
So, of course, you know, so I, I thought, well, you know what? Folks need to learn how to do their own praying. Amen. 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 You need to learn how to believe God for yourself. Amen. And that way you can comfort the others with the comfort that you're comforted by because you've learned how to believe God. Amen. You learn how to pray. But you got all this power on the inside of you. You got miraculous, miraculous power that, that, that God can manifest in, in so many different ways in your life because you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then what happened? It says on the day of Pentecost. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were assembled together. And it wasn't just the 12 apostles. Amen. There was 120 approximately 120, and they all got filled. Cloven tongues as a fire appeared over them, and they spoke with tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were people that were standing around. Some was wondering with amazement, what is this? We hear them speaking in our own language, and it lists a whole bunch of folks listed from many different, lang- uh, different nations, and, and who, are, who are, what is this going on? They wondered. And then there's others, the Bible says, who stood by and they were mocking, mocking. And they go, these people are drunk. And Peter stood up and he says, these people are not drunk as you suppose. Amen. He didn't say they weren't. He just said, they're not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock. Amen. <laughs> and so he says, but this is that. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters. So there you go, women preachers. That's right. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams or vice versa. I'm not really sure sometimes. I'm like in the middle right now. I'm in like old man, young man. Depends on who you're talking to, right? Now, I know, I remember when I was 36, I was referred to as a geezer. But of course, that was coming from a 16-year-old. Amen? Now that 16-year-old is almost 36 themselves. So they're a geezer. Hello, now they qualify. Now, I'm going to remind them of it too when I see them the next time. But young men, old men, dreams, visions, prophesying. And it says, and they were, what happened, they, these people standing by and some were mocking others. What are they doing? It says, for we hear them speaking in our own languages. The what? The wonderful, the wonderful works of God. Amen. What is the spirit of God who is the spirit of grace? Hello. He wants to pray things out through you. He, you, you, you just got to open your mouth and, and, and let, and just pray. Amen. Now, now again, I want to remind you, you don't have to do this. Yay. And, and there's no condemnation. Right. You know, because there's sometimes people get the way they communicate. You got to pray in tongues. You got to read your Bible. You got to, you got to, you got to. You know what? That just puts people in bondage and they get all guilt and condemnation. And then they start doing it just to alleviate the guilt in their life. I feel bad if I don't. I'm re- Why are you reading your Bible? Because I feel bad if I don't. That's not a good reason. Don't read your Bible motivated by, to, to, so you don't feel bad. I'm gonna, some people are getting free right now. So people, you're getting free right now. Because you read your Bible because you feel bad for not reading your Bible. Don't you do that. Don't go praying in tongues because you feel bad because you didn't pray in tongues. You know what? Praying in tongues because it's an invitation from the Father to come and fellowship with Him. And you're just accepting the invitation. Amen? Read your Bible because it's an invitation from Father to come and know Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Read your Bible because it's an invitation for you to grow in faith. Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so they spoke the wonderful works of God. There's a lot of prayers that are going up in the body of Christ today in certain aspects of the body of Christ. And uh, I want to address it. I did leave off the last time I was here, as you know, some of you know, I was not here last Sunday. I was in Texas and Mexico 
following the plan of God there, preaching and ministering and doing the graduation service and, and all that at the school that we have down there in Mexico. And so, uh, but the week before, I, I titled my message, I gave it a good subtitle. We've been calling it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? But I gave it a subtitle, and the t- subtitle was One Black Man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I wish you could have been here, or some of you were here. When I said one black man, Brother Bob said, my Lord. <laughs> Is that right, Bob? That's right. <laughs> I called it one black man. The reason why I called it one black man was to, to remind you of one of the greatest, or if not the greatest, revival to hit the world. And that was the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles. There's a lot of teaching and preaching that goes on about different kinds of moves and things like that. The certain kinds of awakenings, the great awakenings, the second great awakening, and we want to have the third great awakening. But the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the Azusa Street Revival is something that's kind of glossed over. But that is a huge thing that took place in Azusa Street, Los Angeles, California, and God used a black man by the name of William Seymour. Do you know that millions of people from around the world in that three or four year period traveled to come to that little old church, that little old stable, that clapboard building there. It used to be a feed store and then they turned it into a mission house. Well, I hope you were blessed by the message today. I'm going to close out our broadcast today by giving you an opportunity to make the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. In fact, it will affect your entire eternity. And that is to say yes to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says that there's no other way of salvation. And everybody needs to be saved. And so there's no other way to be saved except through Jesus Christ. The Bible says He came and He laid down His life for us. And he was sacrificed and crucified. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. And the scripture says that if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and you confess that, and if you believe and confess that Jesus was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. So why don't you do that right now? Humble yourself right now by surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Here's how you do it. Pray this prayer. Say this. Say, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of the world. Lord Jesus, I believe that you were raised from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and save me now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe that you were just born again in your spirit. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord to be saved will be saved. And now you need to grow spiritually. One way that you can grow spiritually is you need to get plugged into a good local church. And if you don't have a home church somewhere, we invite you to come right here at Faith Alive Christian Center. And we'd also like to help you to grow spiritually. So contact us. Let us know that you prayed that prayer. And so we can help direct you in your spiritual growth. Again, thank you for joining our broadcast today. God bless you. And we'll see you next week. And beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to me. It's holy.
Holy Ghost. 